I bet good money on you not knowing that I've already done a series like this way back in 2018, and I can confidently do that because who the fuck knows about my 2018 content? <laughs> but for real, back in 2018, I used to do music-related videos, more on the reacting side, but sometimes I would do other things, like review a band's entire discography or rank their top 10 most popular songs, and I want to bring that back because they were a lot of fun to do. So here's how the series works. I go onto YouTube on a private tab, not signed into any account, so it's the most fresh results I can possibly get. I look up a band and sort by views and then grab the top 10 results, then rank them from my least favorite to favorite. And there's no better way to restart the series by looking at the top 10 hits from the UK alt-rock experimental band Radiohead, a band I've never really been a big fan of. I've heard Creep like everyone else, friend and frequent collaborator Jonas sent me exit music, parentheses, for a film, and I really didn't vibe with it. And up until this point, the only song I liked from them was How Do You off their debut album. AKA the album that sounds like it was made by an entirely different band. <laughs> So picking Radiohead was a good choice in my opinion, because I would like to use the series as a more of an introduction to an artist, and if I end up liking a lot of their work, then maybe in the future I could review their entire discography. And given the fact that I've been on a Radiohead bin since I started working on this video, I think that's more than enough proof on why this was a great choice. And remember, this list is based strictly off of my own personal enjoyment and feelings, I am not trying to rank these by objectively because that's dumb, and if you have your own personal ranking for these, leave them in the comments down below, I'm, I'm interested to see how other Radiohead fans would rank these, but enough wasting time, let's get into the list. But I'm a so starting off, we have their big hit, Creep, the song that everyone knows Radiohead for, and the song that Tom York and the rest of the band personally have a lot of hatred for, and I think they're perfectly valid. The Ben's OK Computer, Kid A, and In Rainbows are currently the Radiohead albums that I've listened to all the way through, and I've garnered about 30 songs that I like, and any other songs off those albums that I didn't weren't because they were bad. For example, let's go back to Exit Music. It's a good song, I would never deny that, but it's just something that personally does nothing for me. But Creep, on the other hand, Creep is the one Radiohead song I've heard that I genuinely do not like. <laughs> I may be a new Radiohead fan, but I will go on record with this popular opinion saying that Creep is massively overrated to hell and back, and they have so many better songs in their discography, even on Pablo Honey, which I've only heard Creep and How Do You. <laughs> saying that Creep gives off incel vibes is like saying you need to breathe in order to live. I, I don't think I really need to say anything more than that. It's widely known about the bands and even the fans' hatred for the song, and you can count me into that group. So following up Creep, I've put Daydreaming here at number 9 because out of the 10 tracks, it gives me the least amount of emotional response until, I don't know, about 5 minutes in when those haunting strings come into play, and then the track closes with that uncomfortably disturbing vocal, which I always forget about until I get to that part. I can have some respect for how the song opens with these, like, melancholic synths and bells, and then by the time we get to the end, it's just horror, but... Other than that, like I said, it just doesn't do much for me. It's above Creep because, like I said, I genuinely do not like Creep. Well, Daydreaming is a song that I don't hate, but I also don't love. It's kind of just there and not something I find myself going back to. Next up, we have House of Cards, and this is where we start getting into songs that I do like. I like the mostly dry guitar playing, that groovy riff, the mid-bar drum and bass introduction, also known as a delayed drop, a term that I'm not entirely sure actually exists, I've just taken it from Simon Servita, and it's a trick in music that I love a lot. The textures of the percussion are really nice, I like the drone pan in the left ear, the reverb and delay on Tom's vocals, it's really nice in the mix and helps fuel the ambience of the track. Like a lot of the tracks on In Rainbow, the song's an overall vibe. The fact that the song is about being in love with a woman who's already in a relationship would make you think that I would put the song higher, and while I do like the song more knowing about that meaning, and I do like the song in general, it's not as memorable as the other songs that I've put above the spot. So, uh, I have a feeling this is gonna be probably one of the many unpopular opinions putting Lotus Flower, a track off of one of their worst albums from what I've heard, above House of Cards, a track from one of their best albums. And while Lotus Flower is always one that doesn't leave much of a lasting impression to me, it does have more memorable moments to me personally, more specifically with Tom's high range singing on the refrain and chorus. It's just got this nice sound to it that's very pleasing to my ears, and the vocal melodies throughout the entire song are just perfect. In Rainbows currently has some of my favorite singing from Tom, but... My liking for Lotus Flower is literally built off of the track's vocals. I think it's the only thing I like about the track. 
Not to say the instrumental is bad and that I don't like it. It's just the least memorable part of the song for me. And while it's a nice vibe, it's just got nothing on Tom's vocals, in my opinion. I feel like the majority of the fan base would put no surprises at number one and Maybe one day it will be for me, but initially, this was at the way bottom. Yes, below creep. Let me explain. I just didn't really enjoy it all that much when I first heard it, but then I did quickly move it at least above creep because I realized my mistake in committing that blasphemy. And then over the course of working on this video, it's just slowly climbed up to the list because the more I listen to it, the more it actually kind of grows on me. I enjoy the lullaby aspect of the instrumental. I like the song topic because I'm a sad boy and... God damn it, how the fuck is that chorus so catchy? I would not expect to find a chorus that consists of basically one line to be that catchy. There's a part of me that does wish that I would have heard this song back when I was working at my old job that I despised because that job was the cause of many mental things and me growing a liking to any song that mentions the workforce being a dog shit thing, and it would have most likely been something I would have listened to a lot and related to, but sadly I'm just now listening to the song and, and I just don't really hold those same feelings. With that being said, this is going to be a go-to if I ever find myself ending back up in that headspace. <laughs> Overall, when it comes to songs about suicide, I'd put it at number three under Metallica's Fade to Black and Bad Flowers Ghost on my list of personal favorites. Fade Starting off, I love the arpeggiating guitars. The riff being played just sounds really nice to me. Once again, Tom brings some really great and sonically satisfying singing during the chorus. The great vocal melodies don't stop at the chorus, though. They're even in the verses with the first two lines having Tom reaching up for that last word and then singing more lower and subdued for the last two lines, and it just sounds so fucking good. I also like the part where Tom starts yearning for a banana. The song topic being a usual that I found in Radiohead's discography, death, and the pointless existence of life and how one day the sun will go supernova and eventually our galaxy will merge with the Andromeda galaxy and everything will be swallowed whole. But Tom ends the song on a more lighter note, telling the listeners to immerse your soul in love, something that I think a lot of people point to as the true purpose of life is to live. There's the generic advice of live life like it's your last day, but I mean, it's pretty true. That's the mindset you should be in, and I think Street Spirit is a great telling of the fear of death. I find myself thinking a lot about the concept of death and time, so I might grow more attached to the song later down the line, but currently where it stands, the other four songs we have on the list I enjoy far more. I tossed back and forth on whether or not I like Fake Plastic Trees more than Street Spirit, but every time I listen to the song, it's a confirmation that I like it more. Sonically, everything about the song is beautiful from both the instrumental and Tom's singing. I love the slow buildup of energy throughout the song that leads into Tom's incredible drawn out wear on that second chorus that then leads into all this energy during the third verse just to die down to the third chorus, which every chorus in this song tones down the energy and brings the instrumental back to that simplistic acoustic guitar from the beginning, which is nice. The storytelling across the track going between a woman, a man, and then finally the narrator, all showing them living in a fake world. Everything the woman buys is fake, and the man's job is making people look fake, and the narrator yearns for a fake relationship, and it, in general, just all wears them out. And in the end, the narrator would be willing to create a fake version of himself just to please the fake woman that he's in love with. It's such a beautiful song. That, that's really all I can say about it. Now we're entering the top three with Burn the Witch, a song that sonically everything sounds good from the instrumental to Tom's singing. My favorite thing about the song being those violins that aren't being plucked with your finger like you normally would, but instead a guitar pick, which gives off this unique sound to them and personally sounds like something I would do in my music, but it's not something I ever really thought about until I read about it being done for the track. I mean, I've thought about putting my cello through a guitar amp. <laughs> And then when you get to that chorus and everything just sounds so grand and atmospheric, I honestly don't have very much else to say about the song, which might make putting it above Fake Plastic Trees an odd choice because I have more to say about that track, but Burn the Witch just sonically sounds so fucking good for its entire runtime and just leaves a more lasting impression for me because of it. Fun fact, Karma Police sat at number one up until me writing the script, and then I swapped it with what I originally had for second place. The song's good. I like it. 
I have more appreciation for it in the context of OK Computer and the fact that the song is one of the more lighthearted ones on the album, which then kind of makes it funny how it's followed up by fucking fitter happier. <laughs> the highlight for the song for me is that around two and a half minutes in when everything just kind of kicks into emotional gear and you start hearing Tom belting out this odd but satisfying vocal delivery that's coded in reverb and delay. It's perfect being the halfway point, the starting of the song's end, because this is the climax, the peak of the track, in my opinion. The only thing else I really have to say about it is a part of the track that confuses me, and I've yet to find an answer for it. Towards the end of the track, when everything's diving into a tape stop, you can hear two chords of a piano play. Now, this sounds like it would be a lead into the next song, but it doesn't. And I mean, it could just well be a simple piano that they put in there for whatever reason or accidentally left in. But despite me hearing this song for the first time only a few days ago, it's always stuck out to me and just feels odd. Which is weird coming from a Radiohead song, because any odd choice they make, I gladly welcome it. And not to say I don't welcome this piano, it's just a choice that confuses me. For Radiohead standards, I want to immediately assume that there's some inherent meaning to this, so I gladly welcome any theories that you might have. But, I mean, like I said, it could just be a fucking piano. <laughs> And finally, at number one is High and Dry, another song that Tom York hates, but I absolutely love it. Currently, out of all the songs I've heard, this is my favorite one of them. And that could possibly change in the future the more I listen to their discography and the more the time goes on, but that's in the future, and we're in the present. And in the present, High and Dry is my favorite Radiohead song. I love the rhythm of the acoustic guitar, it's just got this melancholic, slightly sunny vibe while still having that depressing sound that you would expect from the band. Also, the panning of that acoustic guitar, going from being somewhere in the middle of the right ear to then being in the center once Tom comes in, and that pattern continues throughout the whole track, is amazing. There's actually a lot of instruments being panned throughout the track, and it just builds to an overall euphoric ambience. Speaking of Tom, his floating vocals over the track is just fucking beautiful. And despite the fact that I can't get anywhere near close to reaching those high notes in the chorus, I still try to sing them every time. Then there's that guitar solo that, while being incredibly simple, it's great to me because of it. Not everything needs to be overcomplicated, and the solo being, like, two notes just makes it really simple to hum, and I vibe to it a lot. And also the line... has gotten stuck in my head the most out of any Radiohead song I've heard. The drums are also a massive highlight in the song for me. I feel like they have such a different sound compared to the rest of the tracks from this list, and even off of the bend. And the sound they give kind of reminds me of the drums off of Blink-182's I Miss You, which is a song that I also really fucking like, especially for the drums. So yeah, well, it's a admittedly pretty basic and simple song, I really fucking vibe with it a lot, and it's been the one track out of all of these that I find myself just continuing to go back to. Even when I go to listen to all of them for this video, I always end up starting the playlist with High and Dry.